Hey YouTubers, welcome back to my channel. Shell Sullivan here, and you may have seen me playing with the gun cotton that I've been making. Lots of fun. It can be dangerous, so safety first. Um, but now I'm going to teach you how to make it. My, the way I make it is very powerful, and it's very fast, and it's relatively inexpensive. You need two things from the hardware store. Sulfuric acid based drain cleaner, potassium nitrate based stump remover, and um, and some cotton that you can get from the grocery store or the drugstore. It's uh, very easy to make, though it can be a little unsafe. So safety first, people. Check your local laws. Make sure you're not going to break any local laws making this explosive. It is powerful. It's even more powerful than gunpowder. And so check your local laws. Make sure you're, that you're uh, in compliance with the law. Um, it's fun to burn. And it's uh, let's just get on with the tutorial, and I'll show you how it's done. These three ingredients are what you're going to need in order to make the gun cotton. A sulfur based, sulfuric acid based um, drain cleaner, potassium nitrate, which I obtained from this stump remover. Both these can be found at your hardware store. I think this is about seven or eight dollars, and this is about nine or ten dollars. You need some 100% pure cotton, no synthetic materials. It has to be cotton. 100% pure cellulose cotton. Those three ingredients. <clears throat> One additional ingredient, baking soda. Baking soda is not necessary for the as an ingredient, but it's good as for a safety precaution. So what I've done is I have um, a bucket of water with a generous amount of this baking soda dissolved in it, and I keep it nearby in case of an emergency. If we have spill any acid on our hands or fingers or clothes, then it can all be easily neutralized by dipping it down into the uh, the baking sodas and water solution. Okay, we're going to make a small batch. It's about five or six grams of cotton, sixty grams of potassium nitrate, the powder, stump remover, two hundred twenty milliliters of the sulfuric acid based drain cleaner. We've got ice water bath. We've got a vessel that fits down inside because this reaction is exothermic. It's going to create a lot of heat. And this reaction has to be kept below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, below 20 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, the, uh, the cellulose will dissolve and become a dirty, nasty sludge. All right. This reaction also will produce quite a bit of noxious fumes. That's why I'm doing it outside on a breezy day. Do not breathe the fumes. Sixty grams of potassium nitrate. Two hundred twenty milliliters of sulfuric acid based drain cleaner. Right away you see it turns yellow and starts to fume and fizz. And become a violent, stinky mixture. Very gently stirring it. Oh, you need a stainless steel stirring device or a glass stirring device. It may be strong enough to dissolve. metals so make sure you use a stainless stainless steel spoon if, I don't know if you can see or not but the, it gets a little thick like a much thicker than water not like syrup maybe like a very like a watered down syrupy texture and you see I've used that amount because those cotton balls are going to fit right into the bottom of this vessel Right, that's looking good so we're gonna add our cotton balls Let's see what do. Looks like I've, got, I've got six cotton balls I may have room for one or two more in here and we want to squish these cotton balls and kind of push the air out and make sure that this 
soaking up all that nice goodness there. It looks like I've probably got enough solution here for maybe one additional cotton ball. You kind of want to kind of leave them fluffed up. They don't want to be completely packed in there, but you do kind of want to squish it around and get, make sure you get all the air out. Let's try going to seven cotton balls there. Now see, you've got them all pressed down nicely. They fit down to the bottom of this vessel. They're completely submerged. Seven cotton balls. 60 grams of potassium nitrate. 220 milliliters of the drain cleaner, sulfuric acid. Now it has to stay nitrating for 24 hours. Okay. So, here is my gun cotton. It's been nitrated for uh, 24 hours. I added another ice, or ice to the bath late last night. And then, of course, we cover it and set it in a shady place outside so that it can, because uh, it still fumes. It fumes the whole time. There's still fumes coming off of it now. In fact, it feels a little warm. I've got some examples of what it looks like if you pull it early. It still burns quick, but not, not as quick as you want. Not the lighting it off in your hand quick. All right, so now what we got is like, it's all sort of crystallized up into a chunk. So I kind of flip it over and you see You'll see the, the fumes come off it now too. And it's kind of firm. This one actually may have gotten a little warmer than my last one. Because it is it was quite a warm day today. So we'll have to see how this turns out. But anyway, so we're gonna start with some fresh water. water flip it around upside down the acid is still quite strong as I mentioned before I have a, a baking soda sodium bicarbonate and water bath just down here at my feet so we get some acid on something we didn't belong on, we can easily neutralize it pretty quickly. In the back, there's a little drop hit my finger right there, and it's not burning through the glove. It will eventually, but I feel the heat from it. So we're gonna stick my finger down in the sodium bicarbonate and go pss, fizzes up there. So it's very, very carefully. Now you see like almost all the clumps have kind of broken back apart but they still have a lot of, of that yellow color to it so what we're gonna do we're gonna cut this first rinse off I'll, I'll be right back all right our first rinse is complete this batch you know I think this batch is a little softer than in my last batches I think this was due to the warmer weather that we're having Hope that it did not get above the uh, dreaded 20 degree Celsius mark, 70 degrees Celsius. Then you, instead of creating nitrocellulose, it creates some other compound. I'm, I'm not familiar with the name of it. It creates something else and uh, basically dissolves the cotton into like a goo. This is looking good though. See my cotton is still is softening up. But it still feels firm, like it has its original strength of cotton in there. So that's the second rinse. We're gonna squish it around in there. Let me add a 
And we'll get a little bacon soda bath in this. There we go. So, because I, I saw a little bit splash out, so as soon as you see it splash, it should. Yeah, you see that? You see that on camera there? Yeah, that's good. So you see the still quite a bit of acid. <laughs> yeah, still quite a bit of acid in that in this water. So we're gonna squeeze it, squeeze it around, squish the fresh water through it. This is cold water from the cold water from the tap. But already when I like squeeze that cotton like that, <laughs> it feels like inside of it feels like bath water coming out. It's nice and warm. So these are cheapy gloves. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend coming in direct contact with that acid with these gloves, but for this rinsing process it's working fine. out here since I'm dealing with just a pretty dilute acid I'll just dump this off right there All right. now some people will say that you need to rinse it off in the actual sodium bicarbonate bath baking soda and water and that will neutralize any acids remaining in the cotton but then you have to wash and wash and wash the sodium bicarbonate out because if you, you if you leave any sodium bicarbonate in it, it's going to slow the burn down because it's going to release carbon dioxide as it heats up. And so if you're going to have to wash it that much anyway, then um, you know why not just wash it thoroughly until you get all the acid out. You don't have to worry about cleaning something that might inhibit the burning of the cotton back out of it. So. All right. It didn't look like much like that, but it's gonna um, as it dries. Typically, when it dries, as about when it's about halfway dry, I'll kind of come in and start pulling it apart, get it fluffed back up. In fact, if anybody has a good method for, sometimes when you, when you get the cotton and it's dried out, it's, it gets kind of strandy and clumpy, just because it's been physically mashed together so much. But if, if there's a good method for like fluffing it back out, I've just been pulling it apart by hand, which is kind of tedious. I've just been reaching in and pulling the strands apart as it dries. All right, there's absolutely no heat left in it. No heat at all. I have a test here to see if we're uh, missing all the acid out of it. And that is, some of that sodium bicarbonate. So what we'll do is we'll squeeze uh, the piece. We'll squeeze our gun cotton into the sodium bicarbonate, and I don't see anything there. No bubbling. That's a good sign. That means I've just about got it fully cleaned. have come unwound. They're initially kind of a spiral like a you know like a toilet paper roll. They have kind of thin cotton's been rolled up into a ball shape. I wonder what this would be like if you had some uh, some just like actual natural cotton right off the cotton plant before it's been processed any 
piece of trash in there. Well, I'm not getting any any reaction out of the water or that either, so I'll call this the last rinse. Okay. Here it is. Just rinsed. Just gonna... Have a Disney woodpecker in the forest there. He sounds awesome. Okay, so we're just going to pull these big clumps apart. Feels pretty strong. I think it. I think this batch does have just a very, very slight yellow tinge to it. I think this this batch got a little warmer than I normally have been. I've been making it through the late winter, and now it's spring. And this may have to pay extra close attention to the ice bath that I give it. And make sure that it stays. Maybe I can, uh, maybe here's what I can do. I can take my little, my little jars, uh, my bath and my jar and just drop the whole thing inside of a styrofoam cooler to put the lid on it. And then my ice bath will last. And I can uh, still do it outside, poke some holes in it. So, cheapy styrofoam cooler would probably keep it perfect, even on a hot day. Okay. So there, it's kind of all mostly declumped. If you're like me, you'll, you'll play with it while it's drying and you'll, you'll end up <laughs> fluffing it all up by hand. Because it will dry faster if it's spread out and these clumps are stretched out. Okay. Looks good. I think that's going to be like, I don't know, six or seven grams of cotton, gun cotton, when it's all said and done. When it's all dry, we'll measure it. And... As you notice, I'm touching it with my hands now. We've washed all the acid out, so it's safe to touch. It's kind of clean smell to it. Maybe a very slight hint of like pool kind of pool chlorine smell. But very faint. Okay. So we'll spread that out. We'll set it inside. Good place to dry. And we'll be back to film the final test burns. And maybe I'll show off a couple of my toys and some of the tricks I did with it. And um, That'll be on the day three. Here we have some cotton. Here we have some cotton. Here we have some cotton. And in my hand over here, I sneakily have some more cotton. At least these four pieces of cotton are different. This is piece of cotton is unnitrated. <clears throat> this piece of cotton was nitrated under my recipe, but only for 12 hours. And this piece of cotton here was under nitrated for 24 hours. Here's what regular cotton burns like. All right. This is my recipe, but pulled after 12 hours instead of letting it fully nitrate for 24 hours. Much faster. You see this cotton ball still burning. Look at all the ash left behind. All right. This is nitrated at fully 24 hours, but... Um, with not enough potassium nitrate in the mixture. This is as I'm ramping the formula up. Big difference. Pile of smoldering ash, fast burn, but quite a bit of ash left. 
And this are here extremely fast, but see the ash that was left? This is what it looks like when you get it right. See that? Almost nothing left behind. A tiny bit of dust and a tiny bit of water moisture. Okay guys, have fun with your gun cotton. Uh, be safe. Like I said, check your local laws. Make sure you're not breaking any laws. Um, and thanks for watching my video. If you thought it was, you liked it, please give me a like on Facebook and YouTube. If you think your friends might like to check it out, share it on both those platforms, or any other platform for that matter. If you got something to say, you know where to do it in the doobly doobs below, comments. And if you'd like to see more stuff like this, then subscribe to my channel. But only if you think I earned it. Thanks for watching.